Hey Lucy, it's uh, Jonathan, your Cheap and Shelf Record Collector. Um, hope everybody's having a great day. It's uh, about 85 degrees here in Maine. It's sunny and just unbelievably beautiful. So I just went for a nice walk around the neighborhood. And when I came home, in the doorway, records. So, uh, about a week or so ago, I saw online a, a website called Wolfgang's Vault. And they were having a 50% off sale. And it was late at night, and I probably bought more than I should have. But I, truthfully, I can't remember everything I bought. So we're going to open it now, and we're going to go through them. Let's see what, what, I, what I bought the other night. Uh, okay, so let's see. A little note, a little invoice. Very good. Uh, three used, and one, two, three, four, five new records. So that's pretty good. First one is one I used to have. Back in, back in the day, and I got rid of it. I'm sorry I ever did. John Hammond, and this is uh, Can't Beat the Kid. I remember this being a great album. Uh, Kenny Buttery does the drums. Uh, Spooner Oldman does the piano. Um, Eddie Hinton also uh, guitar and piano. So this was a great record. Really happy to get this back in. And again, I haven't, even, I haven't even looked at these yet, so I don't know what the condition these are. This is used one. Let me take a quick peek and see what kind of condition it's in. It's on the Capricorn label. And it looks pretty damn clean. Some, you know, general dust and stuff, but no scratches or anything. It looks good. So, give that a little cleaning and dig into that. Um, next album is an album I wanted for a long time. And actually, the first time I saw this was many, many years ago. This girl I was dating, her brother had this album. And I was like so jealous. I always wanted it. I'm so glad I finally got it. Spider Blues, which is, if you know, Blues, Rags, and Hollers. It was uh, three guys, um, Spider John Kerner, um, uh, Sonny, uh, Tony's little son Glover, and let's see, Corner... Over in Ray and Dave Ray, so they put an album in the mid '60s, I guess, out of Minneapolis. And uh, if you don't, don't have it, and you're into the that uh, white blues kind of stuff, that early blues from uh, the 1960s. Um, yeah, blues, rags, and hollers. They put two uh, two albums out. I like the second one better, but they're both great. And this is a solo album of his. And this does have Tony Glover on uh, harmonica, or as they call it. Mouth harp. This is on Electra, and it's a stereo, I think. And it's the Red Electra, so it's definitely a repress, but that's okay. And also, it looks clean, and that's really where it's at. Clean records. Uh, I'd rather have a clean repress than a dirty original. All right, next one. The one and only great, Mike Bloomfield. This is a retrospective two-record set, including unreleased material. I like it when you open it up and you hear a crack in the spine, so it's like you know it's never been played or never been played a lot. So it has him with the uh, side one is with the Paul Butterfield Blues Band and Electric Flag, side two Electric Flag, uh, and Al Cooper, side three with Al Cooper, and side four with very various other musicians. So. The great Mike Bloomfield, really happy to get that. Very cool. Uh, next one I got is actually the guy that's playing right now. This is a sealed record, and it's uh, Art Farmer. This is The Time and the Place, live concert and performance, with uh, Jimmy Heath on, ta on sax, uh, Coleman Walton on piano, Walter Booker on bass, and Mickey Rocker on drums. So, obviously it's a repress, that's okay. But it's brand new, in the sleeve. And, um, I could, I mean, I did pay $17 for one, 10 for the other, 15, the rest are all under the 10. So, it sort of broke my rules, but that's okay. I was really in the mood to spend some money and get some records. That was, uh, like 15 bucks. And this one, another repress, but oh, I'm so happy to have it. Jerry Mulligan, Mulligan Plays Mulligan on Prestige. 
Um, recorded in 1951. These are all sealed records, which I really love. Um, yeah. Yeah, Jerry Mulligan. You don't care about the who plays with them, but great, great album. I'm hoping. <clears throat> and then we got some uh, blues. Big Bill Brunzi. And this is uh, Do That Guitar Rag, 1928, 1935. Um, Bill Brunzi was a uh, master of the 12-string guitar. That was his big thing. And this is on Yazoo Records, which is great. Um, yeah, looking forward to digging into this one, too. Maybe that'll be my shot without the, without the, without the glare. There you go. Okay, Big Bill Brunson. Next up is one I never knew even existed, but happy to have it. And it's uh, Van Morrison at the Bottom Line, 1978. Bottom Line was a club in New York City uh, where studios used to per, uh, showcase all their different performers. I was there a couple of times. I saw Ry Cooter there, saw Tom Waits there, um, Flora Purim with Erto. Who else did Oh, Dan, Dan Hicks and the Hot Licks, I saw them there too. So it was a great little club, probably only about 150, 200 people tops. So this looks really good. Um, Moondance, Wavelength, Into the Mystic, Brown Eyed Girl, Kingdom Hall, Caravan, and Cypress Avenue. So yeah, looking forward to this a lot. Van Morrison Live. I never even knew this album, album existed. But when I saw it, I said, gotta have it. And the last one is, and I reckon most people here are not going to know who he is. He is a, a local musician from Maine who died fairly young. A musician that um, uh, Chet Atkins said was the finest guitar player he'd ever heard. And his name is Lenny Brew. Lenny Brew grew up in Maine. His parents had a country western band. And he sort of outgrew that and played jazz and um, sort of eclectic music. He had a lot of drug and alcohol problems, spent some time in prison, but boy, he could play. Amazing. So I'm real happy to get this record. And this is direct to disc, which is cool. Direct metal disc mastering uh, by Bob Ludwig, who also is right here in Portland, Maine also. Uh, this rec recording represents the final Adelphi LP release of Lenny Brew solo guitar music. Taken with the last solo session before his untimely death, August 1984. So if you don't know and you're looking for a really amazing guitar player, uh, unknown but amazing, Lenny Brew. Okay, so that's all I, pick, I got for my new records. Then today, uh, I was out, it's Tuesday, so that's uh, Senior Citizen Day at uh, Goodwill, which gives me 20% off. I also went down to uh, the Antique Mall where I have uh, where I sell records and um, bought some from another dealer, even though I know I should be selling, not buying. I bought some from the other dealer also. So the first thing I bought from the other dealer is my Dave Edmonds collection. I don't have this particular one, and this is uh, information. Love Dave Evans, Edmonds. Love that, uh, as someone called them, uh, what is they? Uh, Chuck Berry on speed. So... It gives you an idea of what kind of stuff they do. Just great stuff. So looking forward to digging into this. Dave Edmonds. Um, then I got a bunch of jazz compilations. Uh, really old stuff. Um, even older than I am, which is like pretty amazing. First one was uh, Bethlehem's Finest. Bethlehem was a label in the 40s and 50s. Put out a lot of jazz. And this one, the reason I got this one is because it features Dexter Gordon on a song. Johnny Hodges on another one and um, Zoot Sims, so that's pretty cool. Volume 8 of Bethlehem's Finest. Another compilation, this is from um, Italy, and it's called Bop Masters, unreleased and rare perform unissued and rare performances, and it features Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Parker, Fats Navarro, uh, Milt Jackson, Dodo, Marmus Mamarosa, who I didn't know anything about until last year, who was a great, great piano player. So this is all recorded, I'm looking, 1947, most of the stuff. So yeah, these cost like three bucks. These are, these were inexpensive, so I'm real happy about that. Whoop, there's the glare, there it is. 
another compilation, 1925, 1930, historical records, rare and hot. With a name like that, how could you leave it sitting there for three dollars? You can't. You got to take it home. I don't know any of these people on here. Uh, Blue Rhythm Orchestra, Memphis Jazzers, T. Roy Williams. This song has no name listed, so always interesting and fun. For a couple of bucks, I had to take it home. Another one I got is uh, another compilation called Saturday Night Swing Club is on the air. The complete 90-minute first anniversary show, June 12th, 1937. And this feature, the reason I got this is because it features the quintet of the Hot Club of France with the Django Reinhardt. That's really, it also has Benny Goodman, and um, but, but the real reason was uh, anything that has Django Reinhardt on it, I can't pass up, especially for a couple of bucks. Um, this is also a European pressing, pretty, product of Kingston, Jamaica. That's pretty unusual. They're putting out uh, old jazz albums in Kingston, Jamaica. So that's cool. Got that. Then the rest of these records are one. Oh, uh, where's the other? Oh, one other one I picked up today at uh, Goodwill. This was also uh, two dollars, dollar sixty. Duke Ellington um, Orchestra live at the Click Restaurant, Philadelphia, 1948. And again, the reason I got this is that it features uh, Ben Webster. And Johnny Hodges on saxophone. So, and this one looks, I mean, I played it already. It, it's like never been played. Virtually brand new. So I got it for a dollar sixty. Looked up on Discogs. It's rated around twelve and a half bucks. Why someone would just give it to Goodwill? Never been listening to it. Beyond me. Then a bunch of records I got. I bought um, about 65, 70 records last week from a guy for like $50. And most of them are just stuff I can sell in my um, shop, my, my little booth at the antique mall. Excuse me, I flipped the record over. Actually, just lifted, lifted the arm up. Uh, rest of, most of the stuff, I, is stuff I basic stuff I can sell at my uh, antique mall, uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive, um, sticks, stuff like that. But among them, I had a couple of winners. So these I'm keeping for myself. First one is the uh, Dwayne Allman um, anthology. I don't have this uh, anth the first anthology. I have the second one, but now I got the first one, so that's really good. Really nice gatefold and clean condition. So happy to have that. Also, one of my favorite groups. I've seen them a couple of times. They always put on a great show. Um, country swing band, uh, Asleep at the Wheel, sort of like in the tradition of Bob Wills. This, I think, is their second or third album, uh, Collision Course. Uh, just great stuff. I, this, I, again, I used to have this back before I sold all my collection, so I'm glad to bring it back into the fold. Next two records by a band. Again, I used to have this one and love them. It's a band called Mother Earth, and the woman singer is Tracy Nelson. And I used to listen to this record all all the time, way back in the day. It's a nice double gatefold. There you go. So, love this record. One side is called the city side, one side is called the countryside. Great stuff. And this one is also by Mother Earth. This one I don't know, but I'll give it a listen. It's called Satisfied. Also a nice gatefold with a nice little... Uh, folder here thing with the pictures of the band. That's sort of cool. I like that. With a listing of the songs on Mercury Records. So Mother Earth. Also in that uh, pile of records, another one I'm keeping for myself is, which I don't have, I'm really looking forward to digging into this, Faces. So, Small Faces. Whoop. As you see, the seam is split, but I'll fix that up. Uh, small Faces, the original band with Rod Stewart. Nice gatefold. Uh, Wicked Messenger they do. Um, Shake, Shutter, Shiver. Um, flying. Um, yeah, Three Button Hand Me Down, which I love. So yeah, looking forward to this. Great, uh, the great uh, Small Faces, Rod Stewart. 
this is it was good stuff, real good stuff. Uh, one more is uh, John Kay and Steppenwolf. I don't know this one in particular. Of course, I know the band, but in this album, I don't know. Rock and Roll Rebels. Um, this is 87, so it's way past their, past their prime, but uh, still probably pretty kicking. Love me some John Wool, John Kay. And last but not least is the uh, Flying Burrito Brothers. This is after Graham Parsons was gone, and it's called The Last of the Red Hot Burritos. Um, Chris Hillman, basically, is the, I think, the last guy left in the band at this point. But I'll give it a shot. Nice thing about having my little booth, if I listen to it and it's not for me, just clean it up, put a price on it, and put it out there. So that's my little uh, video for the day. Again, hope everybody's having a great time out there and enjoying this beautiful weather. And uh, until next time, peace.